What's up everyone and welcome back to Pop Beat Breakdowns. Today's Beat Breakdown video off of the back of all your requests from my last Avicii Breakdown. We're now doing a breakdown of a beat in the style of Hey Brother by Avicii. Another one of his great songs that he released and with one of his productions again. So unique and it was the kind of sound which really helped garner his success. So I really wanted to do another type beat production breakdown of a beat I made similar to this. So you can see how to build up a production in this style for yourselves. Hopefully, whether you are new to music production or your experience, maybe there is something you can take away from this video. And as always, I will leave a link below for any plugins I use in this video if you want to get hands on them for yourself. Without further ado though, guys, like and subscribe if you are new to the channel especially, and let's deep dive into this production. So what we've got in front of me right here is the production. Let's just firstly take a moment to have a listen to what it is we're gonna be breaking down today. <laughs> idea absolutely love this the reason why i want to do it is because i was so happy with how this track turned out now what matters is the actual breakdown and how you can make this beat for yourself so let's start at where the beat itself actually started and it was around the acoustic guitar today let's have a listen to it by itself now this was actually a sample that i put in right now you're hearing a uh, what is a, like a high uh, high pass filter so automation is something that is used a lot in these sorts of tracks and we have a high pass filter, a high cut, sorry, using the wrong terminology, high cut filter to kind of add some variation from the pre-chorus. When we actually listen to the track in the chorus, you will hear that uh, this is what it sounds like without this high cut filter. But the, ma the ma amazing thing about automation is you can do stuff like this. And it's very easy to do. All you have to do is make sure you've got a channel EQ opened in the track you want to do this to. Go to automation, go to your channel EQ, and then firstly, you want to turn on the high cut. Make sure this is on, not off, otherwise it won't work. And then when you go to your high cut frequency, which you can see is just above it, you can automate it to create these sorts of little sweeps, which is really cool. Uh, so that's how you do that. So it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. The only things I've really done is I've had a chroma verb uh, for just a little bit more space in the guitar and then the stereo delay again just to create a little bit of movement. I didn't want it to be completely dry. So that's all we've really done of that. And that's the guitar in itself. As you can see, it loops. This is a four chord song. You don't need to overcomplicate the chords at all. So the next thing I thought I wanted to build next was the drums. Now we've got quite an extensive percussion section as you would imagine for this type of song. So let's just play everything together so we can get a full, like a uh, earful of the production. <laughs> Okay, so the best place to start will be from the kick because everything's mixed around the kick. Uh, so the kick today we are using contact and we're using the Prism Retro Pop and it's one of the uh, presets. The I don't want to touch anything, guys, but I think it was the and yeah the anti drop. Uh, preset and just to turn up the compression a little bit on here but this is a native instruments plugin by the way love this got it recently got some really cool sounding kicks in there and uh, for the mix I just turned up the highs a little bit more just to get a little bit of that brightness a little bit of snap in the kick and obviously the lows had a little bit more punch to the bear uh, the kick then for the snare now for the snare we've actually gone for the uh, DMD which is the uh, dr the drummer machine designer in Logic Pro X and I just found the snare which best suited I believe it's the analog circuit so that's the analog circuit snare oh yeah there it is so yeah so we've got a very simple kick and snare pattern at the start now as you know on this channel if you watch it regularly I do like to go into splice for samples because there's nothing wrong with using samples and because it's 120 I was intrigued to know if I could find any hi-hats and I found this a uh, really cool disco house hi-hat sample which I wanted to use and the one thing I have done is I put a sample delay on and I sample it to the right meaning there's a bias in the left but it creates this really nice stereo spread in the hi-hat so they move out to the sides of the mix this can really help with the actual uh, 
production of the drums and where it is from a stereo point of view. So that's something really good to keep in mind. Then we do have some other things I added from Splice. So we got this Don't Leave Sweep, which is basically just white noise going down. Then in the as for development in the verses, we do have this as well. Just a little shaker. I didn't actually want to include it throughout the whole track because, again, I like to take stuff out and add stuff in at certain points just to add a little bit of development. Then also we got some claps as well. Again, splice. They sound more like clicks, to be honest. Now, for mixing this, we have added just the chorus, as I've done to most of, of the percussion. Now, what, the, what the chorus does, if you have 100% mix, 100% intensity, and it's 0.033 hertz, it pushes, basically, the whole signal out to the side of the mix, making it stereo. So it's a very good way of making something mono stereo. Um, and it, as long as you keep it at 0.33, you won't have any of that modulation artifact in there. So it's a really good way to create a stereo spread on something. So, in essence, this is basically the drums. We do have a reverse version of the sweep as well. If you ever want to reverse anything, you just hit Alt, Shift, and R, and that will reverse uh, the signal. And then also we've got this little, little build here. Again, I found this in Splice. Splice really did me some favors today in the production. I'm not going to lie and say that I made them myself, but that's the beauty of Splice. It's a really good resource to have, and I use Splice a lot for my drums. So if you're watching this and you thought if it's something you should get into, definitely I do recommend Splice for drums. We've got a crash as well. Now, just for the crash, I've just added a ROM reverb, which is Native Instruments reverb. Uh, again, the chorus spreading out to the side of the mix, and the channel EQ, just a little bit of a lift in the highs, just to add that air. I love crashes to have that air, because it when they hit, it means it kind of refreshes the production, uh, especially in the chorus, when you've got a whole new section coming in, so that's why I've done that. And uh, then I'm in. And then that's just the guitar as well. So basically that is the drums all together. Now I always put the drums into one bus just so I can mix everything together. It's always very important to do that. And obviously we've got a low boost and we've got a high boost as well. Just to really bring out that clarity and that punch in the drums together. Which gives us the drums. Now now we've got the drums and the guitar down. It's, start, it's time to start building the actual hook of the song. I always build EDM productions from the hook. Because it's the centerpiece of the song. It's the part that everyone looks forward to. So you've got to get it on point. So I decided I was going to start creating some sort of melodies. Now I found this synth lead first. And this is in Utopia by Native Instruments. Uh, I love this. Really good for EDM music. And I just came across this preset. I will give you the name of it. Just because I'm trying to be more transparent. You guys have requested that I give a lot more details. So it's the Cosmic Dust preset. And this is the synth lead that you can hear. And again, like when it comes to when it comes to thinking of melodies, I always just start by going up and down the scales, the arpeggio on the piano, and eventually, trust me, just if you play it over and over, you start to piece certain um, notes together, which go really nice after one another. And that's basically how I make my melodies. I just make it up on the spot and try not to put too much thought into it. Just go with what flows, and that's the best way to go. Now, the next thing I wanted to add in was some piano. I love my compressed pop piano and EDM tracks. Really adds the stamp of the chords. Again, we've got sample delay. Now, this piano is in two parts. We've got one sample delay to the left, one sample delay to the right. This, because of MIDI piano, it can sound very mono, not very like a stereo pairing recording of a grand piano. So by having two separate tracks for piano, where one's the higher part of the piano, one's the lower part, as you can hear here, with the sample delay, it gives it that nice spread. So it sounds like a more real recorded piano. And that's just, again, the, the first thing that really stamps the authority of the chords. I always say it, the authority, um, because you want to be able to hear the chords on the song without them being too intense. Now, at this point, like, I mean, we can have a listen to this just so you can hear at this point what the production sounds like. You can hear there's still a lot missing. There's a big gap in the production that we needed to fill. So the first thing I did was I added another element to the synth lead. So this, is what, this is what we had so far and I added this in now for two reasons firstly this takes over the synth melody in the pre-chorus which is this section here now the reason why I do that is because if you're going to have the same melody in the the build up to the drop as you do in the drop. You need to have some sort of difference, otherwise it's gonna be boring and it's not gonna be as fun. So what I like to do and what Avicii did a lot in his productions was he would have a different synth for the same hook in the pre-chorus and when the chorus drops, you add layers to it and then that's how you develop it while keeping something the same. So that's what I've done there. Now then we go to house piano. House piano is very fun. 
and this is a my bass line sorry not house piano i don't know why it's called house piano so the, yeah electric bump this is our first bass that we added in because you could hear there was a lot of bass missing so it's just a running bass line very simple you know just following the route and i layered that with some deep 808 bass to add a little bit of sub now the deep 808 bass, this is my favourite thing by the way to add to production at the moment. It's the deep 808 bass, yeah, I've given it a 5 star just to remember where it is. It's an alchemy logic preset. The only thing I do do is I turn the attack to 20% because without the attack you get this really horrible stab at the start of the 808 and I don't like that. I like to use this for sub and it works really well. And then the last thing I added is the 70s classic synth bass which again is another alchemy uh, sound. And it adds this really nice kind of like retro sound now you can hear this little throb that's happening this is actually a side chain compressor that we got on here now i side chained it to the kick which you see and it's so, so easy to do by the way side chaining it so i've got an instrument here you click on kick so make sure you've got your tracks labeled so you know which one's the kick and as soon as you put it side chained here whenever the kick plays it triggers the compressor as you can see here creating this nice little throb very very common in these types of productions it helps add a little bit of bounce to the track as well so all the bass together, basically it's just three different components. And that's the whole low end of this production sorted. So now we get onto the massive saws. So this is one of my favorite things again to add to these kinds of productions. Now the massive saws, this is just the ES2. It is a preset, which is you can find here. It's the, uh, where is it? I'm going to find it for you. So in the classics, massive saws, there it is. Now I turn the attack way down to sustain all the way up. And that's where you get this really nice sustained uh, saw synth. And again, we have the compressor on as well, side chained to the kick to create that really nice throbbing sound. So together. Adds just so much more to the mix. So if we first listen without it and with it, you'll see the difference. It just feels in a gap, which I felt like was there in the production. And then lastly, we just need the ear candy, that final piece of resistance, as you could say, the Airways pad. Now for the Airways pad, again, like I love using this. It's a Logic uh, stock pad, but it always works really well for me. And it just sounds like this. No change at all, just again that chorus effect spread out to the side of the mix. And then this is the production as a whole. Now, for mastering, this is a really interesting thing that I wanted to talk about. So there's a lot of different mastering plugins out there. And I've been using loads of different ones. We're trying to figure out which one's best. In the previous video, I was using the Abbey Road GT Mastering Chain by Waves Audio. Today, I used the CLA Mixdown because I wanted to see what this was like as a mastering plugin. Now, again, link is in below. Um, link is in below. Link is below in the comment section description if you want to check this plugin out for yourself. But this is by far my favorite mastering plugin that I've used by Waves just because of what it's done to the production. Now, I'm going to tell you, tell you for what I've done. But first, just listen to the difference here. So I've turned... I'm going to turn it off at the output. So this is a production. And I'm going to turn it on. So all I've done is when you open up this as, you know, it's straight out the tin, everything's on zero. So I've turned the bass up, turned the treble up quite a lot, added a tiny bit of glue. This is basically compression, added a bit of drive. And then on the output, we've turned it all the way up to get that loudness. Super simple, but... The track already sounded great, so I didn't want to do too much to it. So straight out of the tin, this just massively is such a quick way to improve the production without too much effort. And I'm all here for it. I absolutely love it. Uh, the CLA productions, uh, CLA plugins rather, are a great range of plugins. Big fan of them. And this one is, again, holding up to the same standard of the CLA plugins, especially if you're someone who doesn't know how to master such, getting that loudness while being able to control it. This is a great plugin. And I really like it. So I couldn't recommend it enough. So again, link. I'll leave a link below if you want to check it out for yourself. Uh, but guys, that is it. That is the production. Let's just give it one class, uh, last quick listen. Now, quickly touch as well on the structure, just so you know. Uh, so obviously, like Hey Brother, this song starts with guitar. Now, because again, all the ideas were built here. And then it's just about expanding on it. 
So we've got our intro, then we've got a verse, and as you can see, every four bars, something gets added. That's all you've got to do for this sort of thing. This is how you get development in a track and how you get stuff to sound interesting. So again, like we've got kind of like our intro, verse, pre-chorus, and then this is kind of like the chorus here. Where you can get sort of like so then by the time uh, you get to here, we are on to what is the build up. To the it builds, that's where the rolling snares come in really handy. And in the second verse, as you can hear, like you're trying to keep it different to the first verse. It's very important that you do that because if you do that, you're helping with that sense of development. So straight in with the kick, super simple effective. And again, it's just about adding something. simple and then have a little break at the end. build into the final chorus where everything's there and that's basically the structure nothing fancy to it again just applying the rule of adding something different or taking something out every four bars because sometimes less is more don't forget that but that's basically how i built up the whole structure of it as well but yeah guys i hope you found this video helpful and if you did smash the subscribe button as the best way to support the channel and comment below what you want me to break down in future videos but i'm gonna leave it there for today so keep making music and i'll see you in the next video